started with some practice problems on gases. The gas equations are actually super simple. Truthfully, there is a gas equation. The gas equation is the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. All right, you know from the other videos, P is our pressure, V is our volume, N is our number of moles, T is temperature, and R is the ideal gas constant. My preferred ideal gas constant is 0 0.08206. That's in liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Those are the units that I think are the most standard for chemistry. So when we're using the ideal gas law, the units of the constant are going to help us out because they're going to remind us that in order for these units to work, in order for this equation to give the right answer, our pressure has to be measured in atmospheres. Our volume has to be measured in liters. Our number of particles has to be measured in moles, and our temperature has to be measured in Kelvin. So it's almost just a matching game, making sure that we have the units of the variables in the same units as we see in the constant there. Oftentimes, though, we're not interested in one single gas sample. We're interested in how a gas sample changes. As long as the sample is closed, as long as the number of particles can't change, then the combined gas law will be true, which means the pressure times the volume divided by the temperature at any state is always going to be the same. So if we change two of these variables, we can find out what happens to the third. One of the things that's really nice about this equation is that it's what I think of as a not-so-picky equation. Our pressures can be in any units as long as they're the same, and our volumes can be in any units as long as they're the same. The only variable that's, that's picky is temperature, and it's always a picky variable. Temperature, when we're solving gas problems, has to be in Kelvin. Always and forever has to be in Kelvin. To find the temperature in Kelvin, we take the Celsius temperature and we add 273. All right, believe it or not, this is going to answer almost all the questions that we have. So let's start with... Let's start with a problem like this. of 1.1 liter at a pressure of 750 torr. What will its volume be at 600 torr? One of the, one of the uh, techniques that we might want to use with this problem is pulling the numbers out of the problem. That's one of our sort of go-to problem solving strategies. As we read through, the first number we find is a 1.1, <coughs> and that 1.1 is measuring liters. If we're measuring liters, what variable are we determining? Volume. So 1.1 liters must be a volume. We have a pressure of, that's going to help us, 750 torr. If we didn't recognize torr as being a pressure unit, that word pressure in the problem before is going to help us. Or we hopefully remember that torr is a pressure unit. Torr is a pressure. What will its volume be? So the question is asking us for a volume. Now, we have to be careful with our variables. We can't have two different quantities in the problem with the same letter indicating what they are. So to clarify that, we're just going to use some subscripts. So the volume was 1.1 liter at a pressure of, so let's give those guys both the same subscript. And then this is going to be V2. And then the last number in the problem, 600 torr, is P2. 750 torr is the pressure that goes with the volume of 1.1 liter, and 600 torr is the pressure that goes with the volume we're trying to find. Okay, so we're going to go over here and look at our equations, and none of them look quite right. We don't have enough to use the ideal gas law. We've got ones and twos, which looks like the combined gas law. So here's the trick. If the problem doesn't mention a variable at all, we're going to assume that it's constant. So we're going to assume for this problem that the temperature is always the same. If the temperature is always the same, then T1 equals T2, and we can cancel those out of the equation, and we're left with P1 B1 equals P2 B2. You might remember that from the video that you watched as being called Boyle's Law, but I'm not 
so concerned with what we name the law. I'm just concerned with whether we understand it and can use it to solve problems. The Boyle's law is part of the combined gas law. It is not a picky equation. The only variable we have to worry about the units on is temperature, which isn't in this problem. So this is going to be easy peasy. 750 torr times 1.1 liter is equal to 600 torr times V2. We've got some simple algebra here. Divide both sides by 600. Calculator. I want you to think for a second. Do you expect this pressure to get bigger or smaller? Do you expect this pressure to get bigger or smaller? <clears throat> Any guesses? I'm hoping you all said bigger. I'm hoping you can remember from Boyle's Law that when the, the pressure on a sample decreases, the volume increases. If we're pushing on it less, it's going to expand. We can think about that on the molecular level, the particles inside. Or you might just have thought about it in terms of the math. The numerator here is bigger than the denominator. So if we think about multiplying that ratio times 1.1, we're going to get a bigger number. And sure enough, our new volume is 1.4 liters. Technically, it was 1.375, but I had two sig figs here and two sig figs there, and I pretended like that 600 had two sig figs as well, even though I didn't write them before. Liters is going to be our unit, and it seems reasonable because the pressure went down, and we expect that the volume should go up. Okay? All right, let's do another one. Get this erased. All right, a different gas sample. It's a volume of 25 milliliters at 20 degrees Celsius. If I lower the temperature, to zero degrees Celsius, what will the new volume be? The gas sample has a volume of 25 milliliters at 20 degrees Celsius. If I lower the temperature to zero degrees Celsius, what will the new volume be? Okay, so let's pull the numbers out of the problem. That worked pretty well last time. We come to a 25 milliliters. Again, milliliter is a measure of volume, and we have 20 degrees Celsius, which is a measure of temperature. If I lower the temperature to, here's a new temperature, zero degrees Celsius. So this must be a T2, and this was a T1, and this was a V1, and I'm looking for what the new volume is. <coughs> I'm not always solving for V2, I just happen to have it in two problems in a row. Okay, so we're looking for an equation. The one that has ones and twos is the combined gas law, but what variable are we not mentioning in this problem? We're not mentioning pressure, so we're going to assume that pressure is constant. When pressure is constant, P1 and P2 are equal. We can cancel them out of the equation, and we're left with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. <coughs> and this one is called Charles's Law. But again, the name of the law isn't the thing that I care about. All right, let's start imagining plugging these numbers into this equation. And whether you're writing it down or just sort of looking at it at the board, I hope that you run across this problem pretty quickly. Which variables are in the denominator? The temperatures. But one of our temperatures is what? Zero. Can we have a zero in the denominator? Our math teachers will tell us that we can't, or if we do, it's undefined. So what gives here? Can we just not solve the problem? Ah, no, we've forgotten. Temperature is what kind of variable? Temperature is our picky variable. Temperature always has to be converted into Kelvin. 
In fact, if I'm solving a gas problem and I see a Celsius, I'm going to change it to Kelvin right away. So this is going to be 293 Kelvin, and 0 degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. Now that we've fixed the units on temperature, we're ready to solve the problem. Do we have to do anything with volume? Nope, because volume is not picky. 25 milliliters divided by 293 Kelvin is equal to V2 divided by 273 Kelvin. <coughs> to get the V2 by itself, um, we know how to solve this algebra. We're going to multiply both sides by 273 Kelvin. As I'm grabbing a calculator, I want you to think for a second about whether you expect this number to be bigger or smaller. Did you actually think about it, or are you just waiting for me to give you the answer? The volume that I get is 23.5 milliliters. The volume got smaller, but only by a little bit. So the temperature got down, went down. The temperature got cooler. Volumes get smaller when temperatures get colder. So that is what we would expect. And again, we're multiplying by a ratio that is a small number over a larger number. Sometimes we're going to have to solve these problems where what we're looking for is in the denominator, where we're trying to solve for one of the temperatures instead of solving for the volume. <clears throat> some of you will just breeze through that algebra, but some of you that's going to give you a little more trouble. I want to remind you about a technique from algebra that you know, but that might come in handy here, which is to cross multiply. So if this equation is true, it is also true that V1 T2 equals V2 T1. You guys know this from algebra, and we could rearrange it by multiplying both sides by the T's. It would be fine. But occasionally, if you're trying to find the, te the temperatures, it can be nice to get rid of all of those fractions, to get everything all in one line, and then the algebra is easier for us sometimes. All right? Let's do one more. <coughs> Actually, no, I didn't. Never mind. We'll just go ahead and do this. A gas sample occupies actually did the ideal gas law lab, who came and watched it, um, have already worked this problem, if you actually did the handout. But you know what? Let's go ahead and do it all together. Let's do the pulling the variables out of the problem trick. 11.2 milliliters. That's got to be a V. <coughs> Pressure of 745. That unit looks really weird. It is millimeters of mercury, but at least the problem tells us right before that that's a pressure. The temperature is 20.2 degrees Celsius. It's asking us for how many moles. Well, the symbol that we use for moles is N. All right, are we using the combined gas law here? No, we're not. And we can tell that because we only have one of each of the variables. Um, so the equation that we're going to need is actually the ideal gas law rather than the combined gas law. We're going to need PV equals NRT. <clears throat> but the ideal gas law is our picky equation. We're going to have to use R in here. We're going to have to use the ideal gas constant. 
when we're using the ideal gas constant, all of our variables have to be in the right unit. So we're going to have to convert this 11.2 milliliters into what volume unit? Into liters. And we'll do that by multiplying by one liter over 1,000 milliliters, which is going to give us 0.0112 liters. The temperature conversion, we're pretty good at at this point. 20.2 degrees Celsius becomes 293.2 Kelvin. This milliliters of mercury might give us a little more pause. It might be worth remembering that one millimeter of mercury is equal to one tor, and that there are 760 tor in one atmosphere. <clears throat> What we have over here are the equations that I'm going to give you on your quiz, or rather, I'm going to encourage you to have written down somewhere. This is an equation sheet. This is not cheating on the quiz. Um, having this information in one place is what will help you on the quiz. So let's take this 745 millimeters of mercury. We're going to change our millimeters of mercury into tor, so millimeters of mercury on the bottom, tor on top, and those two are just the same, so one and one goes there. Now we need to change our tor into atmospheres. One atmosphere is 760 tor. So I'm going to take my 745, I'm going to divide it by 760, I'm going to get a pressure of 0.980 atmospheres. <clears throat> now we're ready to plug everything into the equation. The pressure that we just found is 0 0.980 atmospheres. Our volume is 0 0.0112 liters. That's going to be equal to N, which is the thing we're looking for, times 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times, <coughs> excuse me, 293.2 Kelvin. All right, so to solve for N, we have to divide both sides by the things that are next to it over there. a little bit careful putting this into the calculator. Be sure that you don't multiply this fraction by 293.2 instead of dividing by it. That's an easy mistake to make. We get a pretty tiny answer here. This is a very small volume and we wouldn't expect to have a whole lot of moles. We get to have four significant figures, so that's actually four, five, six. That's kind of fun. And there's our final answer. All right, so how do you know which equation you're supposed to use? How do you know whether you're supposed to use the ideal gas law or the combined gas law? You're going to look at the variables that are given in the problem. If you have three different variables and are asked for the fourth, then you're going to use the ideal gas law. But if your variables come in pairs, if you're starting out at one condition and then changing to a different condition, then the combined gas law is the one that you're going to want to need. All right, armed with this, try those UT Quest problems again. Um, I'm going to have a practice session at 2 p.m. today. I'll post that Zoom link when I post the link to this video. Um, if you're still having trouble, pop in. Um, we can work a few more problems. We can help with the quest or get ready for the quiz. Um, quiz is going to start at 3 like it usually does. Um, and I think it's going to go great. All right. See you guys soon.